And what we found was that at baseline, uh, the amount of uh, CT DNA was predictive of survival, um, and this was in contrast to some other studies earlier uh, that had shown just plus minus whether it was present or absent. Um, we had a, a very high detection rate, 93% of patients had detectable um, uh, BRFE600 DNA in their plasma using this platform, which is the highest rate uh, uh, so far to date for a similar type of study. Um, and because of the drop of digital technology, we we're able to quantify very precisely the amount. And when we analyzed uh, when we analyzed the levels as opposed to just absence or presence, we found that the levels correlated with outcome in a Cox uh, multivariate analysis. So that was really the first time that's been done. Um, we then looked at patients who, uh, uh, we looked at week four samples because that was what was available to us and we found that the level at week four was also predictive of survival benefit. Um, if patients had no detectable CT DNA at week four, they had an extended progression-free and overall survival, roughly double uh, the patients who had persistent CT DNA detected at week four. So we're thinking that with additional studies, additional time points, um, uh, that this may become a monitoring tool for patients uh, and doctors to help uh, more fine-tune their treatment. For example, patients who uh, have a persistently positive CT DNA after starting treatment uh, may, uh, doctors may want to add an additional treatment which may have a risk of additional toxicity but uh, also additional benefit whereas patients clear their CT DNA uh, during treatment they might just stick with what they're on and wait and see uh, if they progress to then add another therapy. So this is what we're thinking could be the future of course additional studies are needed but it's a very good first step.